Story time about how my grandmother predicted that I would get kidnapped when I was 14 years old. Disclaimer is not my story time and sending me on Instagram. My grandmother and I have always had a very close relationship. We're Mexican and my grandmother believes in ghosts and legends. In the town that we lived in, there was always a legend about girls who got kidnapped. When I turned seven years old, my grandmother told me that I would be kidnapped when I was 14 years old. My parents and I didn't believe her. My grandmother never let me out of her sight after that. Even if I was gonna go to the park and play, she would always come with me. It wasn't until I turned 14 years old that it happened. I was walking home from school and it was the first time that I was walking home by myself. Somebody was always there to pick me up, but this time no one was there. The crazy thing is that my grandmother got confused on the day. So my parents didn't think that they needed to go pick me up because they thought my grandma would. As I turned a corner, a man snatched me up and put me in his car. And he had the scariest mask on. He looked like the devil. My grandmother instantly knew that something had happened to me. She ran over to my school, but I wasn't there anymore. For two hours, the man drove me around in his car looking for a perfect spot. Whenever I would ask him where he was taking me, all he would say was, I'm looking for privacy. When he first took me, he tied my hands behind my back. He threw me in the back of the car, and every now and then, he would turn around and grab at my clothes. He was trying to rip the clothes off of me. But every time he would try to grab my clothes, I would bite him really hard. I made him bleed several times, but this only made him angrier. We finally stopped in a supermarket parking lot. That's when he told me to stay quiet and he left the car. But I was more afraid of what he would do with me if I stayed than if I left. I managed managed to get out of the car without him seeing me. I ran for a minute before I heard him screaming behind me. Reached a highway and a woman stopped her car to help me. She took me back to my parents' house and that's when I found out my grandmother had had a heart attack. She knew that I was kidnapped and my parents went crazy. They took me to the hospital but I was actually okay. I went into therapy for years after that. Legend has it the man is still kidnapping girls. I drive my car every single night in the same route that he drove me. What should I do when I find him? My husband won't stop texting his coworker and doesn't even bother hiding it from me anymore. Disclaimer is not my story time, I said I mean on Instagram. My husband got a new job about a year ago. He finally started earning a lot of money and he really loves his job. I'm a substitute teacher, so at the time, we were really broke. We were desperate for one of us to get a better job. A few weeks after he started his new job, his boss threw a party so that we could all get to know each other. And this is when I met Karen. Karen right away came up to me and tried to make me feel like she was my best friend. She started talking to me about really personal stuff right away. In other words, she was trying to let me know that I could trust her because she was telling me her deepest darkest secrets but i don't fall for that kind of shit easily as the barbecue went on i kept noticing that she would talk to my husband a lot and my husband would reciprocate if he was at the bar she was at the bar if she was trying to grab food he was trying to grab food i called my husband out on it and he told me that they were really close friends at work and that she was basically his work wife i told him he needed to stop that real quick otherwise i would move in with my parents the rest of the barbecue behaved like a little lamb only two weeks later i find messages between them part two is up Husband won't stop texting his coworker and doesn't even bother hiding it from me anymore. Disclaimer is not always direct comments that I'm on Instagram. Two weeks later, I find messages from Karen on his phone. At that point, I had completely forgotten about Karen. Husband and I try to do date nights every single week. On this one occasion, we sit down at a restaurant and his phone kept going off, hanging almost every single minute. He wouldn't turn off the sound. Seventh time it rang, I decided to pick up the phone only to silence it. I mean, at this point, I have no reason to not trust him. But when I take a quick glance at the messages, it said work wife. My blood instantly began to boil. That's when he tried to take the phone from me but I pulled it back. I opened the messages and see that they were having a conversation about me and him going to dinner. And how jealous she was that she couldn't come with him? Mind you, we're sitting in the middle of a restaurant. That's when my husband says, go ahead and read it. I don't give a shit. I look at him and I couldn't recognize him. Like, I literally could not recognize his face. He looked like a different man. He was no longer the considerate, loving husband. He was now just some other guy texting another girl. As I read through the messages, the tears started flowing down my face. And I made a scene. I told him he needed to stop texting her. Then he says, no, I like her. Why would I stop? Part two is up. My husband won't stop texting his coworker and doesn't even bother to hide it from me. Disclaimer is not my story time I sent me on Instagram. That's when he told me that he liked her and why would he stop texting her. I actually had to sit there at the restaurant and explain to my 30-year-old husband why it was inappropriate for him to be texting his work wife. He said they were doing nothing wrong by texting each other. That's when I told him that if he didn't stop texting her that he could forget about me. He said that there was nothing wrong with him having friends. I told him that friends shouldn't tell each other that they're jealous if they're going out with their wife. Then he explained that it was just banter. And she loves playing at being jealous. Ew! Then he said this. Would you rather me hide the messages from you? My stomach sank. This man clearly does not understand that what he's doing is wrong. We've never had a problem like this before. We've been married three years and this has never been a thing. I got up from the restaurant and took an Uber home. Do you think he chased me? No. It wouldn't be another four hours until he got home. I asked him where he'd been and he told me that he was just chilling at the restaurant. For four hours? I asked him once again if he would stop texting her and he said no. That again, they were not doing anything wrong. But their messages were like boyfriend and girlfriend messages. Things like, what do you want for lunch this week? I miss you. I'm jealous that you're going to dinner with your wife. After he said no, I packed my overnight bag and I went to his parents' house. My parents lived two hours from me. I told his parents everything and they went over to talk to him right away. And they were pissed. His dad even threatened him to take him out of his will. His parents have my back and told me that I could stay with them. But instead, I went home to my parents. I also just found out that Karen has a boyfriend. Should I tell her man? 
Or should I just divorce my husband and forget the whole thing? What ofs? And now I'm meeting your boyfriend. See? At least I'm consistent. Why do you need him? Huh? You could have anybody that you want, Jennifer. So, why Chip? Is it just to tick me off? Or is it because you're just really insecure? I am not insecure, needy. God, that's a joke. How could I ever be insecure? I was the snowflake queen. Yeah, two years ago when you were socially relevant. I am still socially relevant. And when you didn't need laxatives to stay skinny. I am going to eat your soul and shit. Uh, you only murder boys. I go both ways. My boyfriend's brother got me pregnant and now I don't know what to do. Three months ago, I started dating this new guy. He was so sweet and good looking. He took me to meet his very rich family right away. We walked into their beautiful house and his brother came right up to me and gave me a kiss. Now, let me say this. My boyfriend and his brother are almost exactly identical. They are both extremely good looking. They're both super muscular and really good shape. They both have long brown hair. They both have green eyes and tan skin. I mean, they are virtually perfect looking. Here's the difference. My boyfriend is so sweet while his brother is more of a bad boy. He flirts with me in front of his whole family and they all think it's hilarious even my boyfriend but here's a problem the more i visited their house the more i realized i was getting butterflies every time i saw his brother and it's like his brother knew it he would look deep into my eyes while we had conversations he always looked like he was about to kiss me one day my mother-in-law decided to take me shopping at bloomingdale's she ended up buying me a two thousand dollar necklace these people have money when we got back to the mansion i decided to put the necklace on but as i was struggling my boyfriend's brother decided to help me out he slowly put the necklace on me then he started smelling my neck then he started kissing my neck and then he started kissing me and we started making out i couldn't help it part two is up that's when my brother-in-law started kissing my neck. Then he made his way to my mouth and we started making out passionately. I physically couldn't stop myself from kissing him. After we kissed for a minute, we realized we were in the kitchen. Anybody could walk in on us. That's when he grabbed my hand and took me outside by the pool. He took me behind the pool house and then we just started kissing more. We were back there for like 20 minutes. So my phone rings and it's my boyfriend, his brother. I push him off and I run back into the house. For the rest of the night, he just kept staring at me and I basically just tried to avoid his gaze. We didn't talk about the fact that we kissed at all for like two weeks. After the two weeks, I found myself alone in their house again. He comes up me and starts trying to kiss me again but this time i did have a little more self-control he did something i never expected he picked me up straight off the couch threw me over his shoulder and took me to his bedroom then he started kissing me more and again i gave in i couldn't help myself it's like i physically can't stop myself from touching him he kissed on his bed and then it happened uh yep we did it it was amazing and magical but i instantly felt remorse let me clear something up though i am still very very attracted to my boyfriend i mean if anything i would have rather done it with him but there's just something about his brother that i find intoxicating i instantly felt sick to my stomach I left his room and went back home. My boyfriend called me and asked me why I wasn't waiting for him at his house. I told him that I didn't feel sick so he came over and brought me chicken soup. I just did the dirty with his brother and he brought me chicken soup? You can imagine how guilty I felt. Two weeks later I wasn't getting my period. So I took a test and it turns out I'm pregnant. And I'm pretty sure it's his brother's. I broke the news to him and his family that I'm pregnant and they're so happy. He proposed to me and we're engaged now. His brother on the other hand still tries to kiss me. But he just got a new girlfriend. We'll never tell the truth though. Or should I? These fantasies started Two years ago? Three years ago? When? Two years ago. It's always the same. It starts the same way. How? Tell me. I prepare for the noble war. I'm calm. I know the secret. I know what's coming and I know no one can stop me, including myself. Do you target people who have been mean to you or uncomfortable? My best friend told my parents that I lost my V-card because she was jealous. Two months ago, I started dating a new guy at our high school. He was the new guy in school and every girl wanted to be with him, including my best friend. Now, before this, my best friend and I had never had any problems between us. She never showed herself to be envious or jealous of me, so I trusted her. And I literally told this girl everything. The new guy started showing me a lot of attention. He followed me on Instagram and DM'd me right away. Apparently, I reminded him of his ex, who he was obsessed with. One morning, my best friend and I are hanging out before class starts. The new guy walks up to us, says good morning to us both, and then asks me if he could talk to me privately. That's when my best friend says, you can talk in front of me. I'm her best friend and she trusts me. So then he proceeded to ask me out in front of her. The look on her face was terrifying. She was so pissed off. Of course i said yes and he walked away that's when my best friend said oh my god he's kind of ugly did you smell his breath it stinks really bad why would you ever go out with that guy then she says you better not go out with him Her that's when she said you better not go out with him or i'll tell your parents i looked at her and said you wouldn't dare and she's like you're right i wouldn't by the way my parents were very strict they'd never let me go out on dates much less have a boyfriend the weekend comes around and i'm getting prepared for my date so i told my parents that i was going to be with my best friend the entire weekend and of course they believe me i send her a text message saying hey i told my parents i'm going to be with you so if they ask you you got to 
cover for me. She says, of course I will. I go on the date with the new guy and it was so much fun. For the first time ever, I was treated like a girl. He held my hand, he was kissing my neck, and he paid for everything. Like I said, up until that point, I'd never really had an experience like that. I was falling for him quick. We'd gone to watch a movie and at the movie theater, he started kissing me. Of course, I kissed him back. That's when he asked me if I wanted to go back to his house because his parents weren't home. And I said yes. As we're driving to his house, I was so excited. So I texted her out of excitement telling her that I was going to be going back to his house. She replied and told me that I was a slut and that I was being too easy. She even asked me to send her a picture of what I was wearing, which I did. Then she replied, you'd look like a slut. Then we got to his house and we started making out again. Part three is up. That's when we started doing the dirty in his room. Oh, well, my best friend is slut shaming me. Could hear her messages come in as we're on his bed. I grabbed my phone and silence it and see that I have about 20 text messages from her. I read the first one and it said, you better not be effing him right now or I will tell your parents but of course i ignored them i was doing it with this guy but to be honest it ended pretty quickly as i'm getting dressed he says do you need me to drop you off at your best friends or can you stay and have dinner with me this boy was trying to cook me dinner of course i said yes i text my best friend and tell her why are you being so mean i told her that nothing happened but she wouldn't believe me that's when i told her that he was going to make me dinner at his house and this is when she got even angrier she said why is he making you dinner what did you do to have to get that dinner I told her nothing and she wouldn't leave me alone. That's when she started calling my phone. Of course, I didn't answer. Three minutes later, I get a call from my mom. I answered right away and pretended to be at my best friend's. And that's when my mom told me that my best friend called her and told her the truth. So I couldn't lie anymore. Took me to my parents' house and they were furious. My parents told this boy that he has to marry me. He literally ran away. I ran out of time. Part four will be up soon. Here's what I think you should buy from the Sephora Beauty Insider Sale. That is the look of a crazy person who has put her skin through hell. Currently, my skin is super irritated. I even have stains from makeup on my face right now. And you know the only way I'm going to fix this problem right now is by giving my skin a little TLC. So I decided to use the Kate Somerville Exfolic Hate. So this is me before and this is me after. This is one of the most iconic skincare products ever. I mean, just look at the color, you know it's gonna work. But don't take my word for it. Go and read all of the reviews on this product. It's that good. This is their best-selling exfoliating treatment that improves texture, pores, and radiance in just two minutes. I'm not even joking, two minutes and you actually start feeling it right away. And the best part is that it actually helps to prep your skin to better absorb the rest of your products. Then I use the Hydrocate Recharging Water Cream. This is a new lightweight moisturizer. It plumps it hydrates and it does all of that by using aquaport hydration technology what is that let me tell you aquaport works by unlocking existing water pathways and creates new ones to transport deeper more longer lasting hydration i mean what else could you need especially if you live in cold weather it's a technology that provides an 80 percent increase in hydration in 20 minutes you better be grabbing your keys because you can get both of these for up to 20 percent off at sephora right now bye after my bestie told my parents that i lost my v card they wanted to force me to marry the guy and then he ran away my parents were so furious that's when i call my bestie to confirm her about what she had done but guess what she ghosted me for four days i even went to her house and confronted her but she wouldn't open the door my parents grounded me for two months they took my phone away and all i could do was go to school and come back home they even took me to the gynecologist i was absolutely humiliated and the boy forget about it he also ghosted me my dad even wanted to go to the boy's house to confront his parents but i managed to convince him not to they even wanted to press charges because he's almost 18. do you see how much drama this caused me finally i see my bestie at school and guess who she was with yeah the boy who i lost my v-card too he even made up a rumor that i begged this guy to do it with me but luckily he does have a backbone and denied it after about dating for a week he broke up with her because she was being mean to me that's when he came back to me and apologized he said that he really liked me and he came to my parents house and apologized my parents finally accepted him and we've been dating now for six months and my bestie is not my bestie anymore bye b story time about how my bully set me up to have me essayed and tried to starve me and this is my own story time i was in school i was a total pushover you guys i never defended myself instead my brothers and sisters would defend me all the time which is why i say my brothers and sisters are my best friends now anytime boys would bother me my twin brother would be right there to defend me and anytime a girl bothered me my sister would literally fight for me so i had this bully in school i'm gonna call her b b was the queen b all the boys and all the girls would do whatever she wanted she was funny she was charming and she made everyone laugh so i understand why she was popular in our class but how can everybody do what one girl said i mean the power she wielded over these boys he was new to our school and i could tell that she did not like me right away in fact i could hear her talking bad about me sometimes in class and then when i looked at her she would pretend like she was talking about somebody else but nonetheless she became friends with some of the girls that i was kind of friends with by the way i got bullied by almost everyone in my year especially the girls but one day b invites me and the rest of the girls over to our house but little did i know that she had invited a boy to essay me part two is up. but that's when i realized she invited a boy to essay me after school we all get dropped off at our house and nobody was home like her mom wasn't even there nobody was there although her little sister was there her little sister was only a year younger than us but she wasn't that much younger her sister was a saint she was super nice and kind right away when we got to her house she tried to separate me from the group first i didn't know why she was doing that until i saw a boy let's call him william funny thing is that these people actually tried to follow me on instagram but i blocked them 
Anyway, William literally came out of the shadows. Like he was already in the house. Creepy. Anyway, everyone in class knew that William had a crush on me, which is why I used to stay away from him. So as soon as I saw him, my stomach dropped. That's when B tells me to go to the garage and I needed to go get something for her. I walk with her to the garage and William walks in too. I don't know where she runs away and locks the door, leaving me and William alone. Instantly, I was afraid. Tried to talk to me, but then tried to kiss me right away. I kept turning my face and didn't want to. He tried to grab my you-know-what. And that's when he tried grabbing my you-know-what. Kept pushing his hand away while he was trying to stick his tongue down my throat the whole thing was incredibly disgusting mind you i'm 13 at the time and i push him away really hard and start banging on the door and opens the door and everyone that was invited was listening through the door and they all started cackling like it was hilarious what had just happened to me me on the other hand i was crying i called my mom and asked her to pick me up but my mom couldn't come right away it would be like another hour before she could william left and i felt much better b then gave me a half-ass apology which i look back and i'm like at least she did but still not cool that's when she starts offering everyone food except for me she warmed up tortilla and scrambled eggs and made everyone a plate except for me she looked at me and said oh there isn't enough for everybody that's when her little sister comes up to her and says stop being so mean give her food her sister took me to the kitchen warmed me up a tortilla and some of the leftover eggs i sat down there with her sister and we both ate together after that her sister and i became friends but b was so mad that her sister gave me food they even got into a huge fight in front of us moral of the story if your bully ever invites you over just don't go I have so many more personal stories should i do more I walked in on my boyfriend doing the dirty with his gay best friend. My boyfriend moved in with his gay best friend six months ago. Here's a little backstory. My boyfriend and I have been together for almost two years. My boyfriend is a social butterfly. He has a million and one friends. I got used to this very quickly because most of them were female and a lot of them were gay. They actually became my friends too in some cases. Early on in the relationship, I met one of his best friends. Let's call him Tim. Tim is very, very gay. And he doesn't hide the fact that he thinks my boyfriend is very attractive. I asked my boyfriend if Tim ever made him feel uncomfortable, and he said no. But here's the thing. Tim sometimes says the most outlandish things about my boyfriend. Yeah, my boyfriend is hot. He's super fit, has a great face. So Timmy loves to comment on his body all the time. On several occasions, he's made really dirty jokes about my boyfriend's butt and the things that he'd like to do to my boyfriend's butt. Every time they go out, he's always trying to get my boyfriend drunk. And when he succeeds, he always takes off his shirt. So then my boyfriend spends the rest of the night shirtless. Obviously, this bothered me, but it didn't bother me enough to ever be concerned. Boy, was I wrong. A few weeks ago, Timmy threw a party and told my boyfriend not to invite me. I got really upset, so I showed up anyway. Timmy was trying to kiss my boyfriend. Part two is...
time I buy out, my husband keeps borrowing money from me and now wants access to my accounts. What should I do? Disclaimer, it's not my story time. Listen to me on Instagram. When I confronted him about buying a $600 watch with my money, he told me that he has every single right to use my money as much as I do. That even though I'm the one earning the money, he is my husband so he can do whatever he wants with it. I got so angry, I picked up one of my crystals and threw it right at his head. Luckily, it missed him, but it did scratch his ear. He went berserk and accused me of trying to kill him. He ran over to the ER with a scratch on his ear. I went straight to my parents' house and I told him what was happening. Obviously, my parents agree with me that he should not be spending $600 of my money on a stupid watch. And they told me to take away any access he had to my money. So I took away my debit card and my credit card from him. We both ended up apologizing to each other, so for a few months, it was okay. He had a few jobs, so he had some spending money for himself. But then he got fired again. That's when he asked me politely to add him to my bank account so that he could get his own debit card from my account. To be honest, at first I thought it was okay, but I didn't say yes or no. I called my parents and they told me absolutely not. And when I told my husband, he threatened to divorce me. He says that I'm neglecting his needs. Part three is a story time about how my husband keeps borrowing money from me and now wants access to my bank accounts. Disclaimer is not my story time, it's not me on Instagram. That's when he threatened to divorce me because I wouldn't give him access to my checking account. He said that I was neglecting him. That's when he told me that if the tables were turned, he would be expected to give me money. And you know what? Totally true. But at the same time, I can't allow him to just buy $600 watches he then made a promise to me that he would only use the money for necessities so for example paying bills or anything like that although we already have our bills on auto pay so i'm not sure how that would work so i took him to the bank and i added him to my account i know you all must think i'm so stupid right now and you know what i am two days later after he got his debit card checked his bank account and he had signed up to three different only fans accounts that's a total of $50 a month coming out of my paycheck plus all the things that he buys on the website. I confronted him again and he told me that it was just for fun. And that because I'm at work and he's home alone, he needs something to entertain himself with. Then he told me that if he didn't have the OnlyFans accounts, he would probably end up just cheating on me. And then he asked me, what do you prefer? Me watching stuff online or me actually going out and finding women? This is where I need your help. I see his point, but I'm not sure if this is like manipulation or something. He really seems so genuine and he's always doing my laundry, cooking, and cleaning up for me. Even rubs my feet when I get home from work and i haven't told my parents about this i think they'll hit the roof should i let him have access to OnlyFans and use my money or should i put a stop to it and risk him cheating what should i do <laughs>